Hi, I'm Stephanie Stewart, Vice President for Communications and External Affairs for Parkland College. I'm your new host of the Parkland Report, and I hope you'll join me this season as we talk to some of the familiar faces around the college about what's new and what you need to know here at Parkland College. Welcome to the Parkland Report. I'm Stephanie Stewart, your host, and today I'm joined by Mark Shagnon, who is the college's entrepreneurship facilitator. Welcome to the Parkland Report. Thank you very much, Stephanie. I'm glad to be here. So Mark, tell me a little bit about your role with Parkland College. Well, my role with Parkland College is that I uh, retired about uh, eight months ago from my previous uh, position with the Champaign Unifor Schools. Mm -hmm. And um, after retirement, I was called by uh, somebody here at Parkland I don't saying, know who that could be. Saying that they needed some help with an entrepreneurial type of a, a program that they would like to get really going. And um, after a discussion, I said I'd love to help be the person to, to get that put together and start it and get it off the ground. And so that's why I'm here. Mark, I'm really glad that you answered my call and that we've been able to work together on this project. So it's really exciting to have you on the show today and we can talk a little bit about the work that we've been doing over the last few months right. and about, about your role. So tell me, before we get started talking about um, Cobra Venture, which is the new entrepreneurship program, mm -hmm. can you give me a little bit of your background? Because your story plays a lot into why you're such a good fit for this position in the program. Well, I'm a, I'm a hometown guy. Uh, I lived in Champaign-Urbana all my life, um, which is odd for some people, but I have. Uh, married, uh, three children, all are grown adults now, all are doing great in their careers. And uh, about 20 years ago, uh, I had the opportunity to go to work with the Champaign Unifor Schools after spending 20 years as a financial planner in the community. And the job was to educate and help our students find out who they are and what career would be the best fit for them. Mm -hmm. And to usher them into this world of work, doing something that they love to do, not something that they had to do. And so I love the position. It was the greatest thing I've ever done in my life. And then coming now to Parkland to have a chance to help students at Parkland College who are entrepreneurial, who want to maybe start their own business or know what it takes to do that, it gives me a chance to educate them, to introduce them to my huge network of people that I know in the community, and to help them achieve what they want, and that's the best fit for their career. So you were no stranger to Parkland before you came oh, no. to work with us. You were constantly at Parkland in your role with the school district. Right. Uh, one of the things I r realized early on that Parkland College, in my estimation, is one of the diamonds in the rough as far as Champaign-Urbana is concerned and East Central, uh, East Central Illinois. Um, the opportunities for our students to come here and either start their college career and then move on to a, a four-year school or to actually go, get an associate's degree and go to work right, or, right away um, or just get a certificate and go to work. It gives uh, our students a great opportunity right here in Champaign, very affordable, great teachers. And so when I had my eighth graders in our junior high schools or middle schools, had no idea where Parkland College was, maybe two or three. So I said, we're gonna do an eighth grade career tour and we started at about nine, eight years ago. And we would bring out our eighth graders to spend a, a half a day at Parkland and learn all about the programs. And from that, I think we've got a lot of students who are now here today who were those eighth graders years ago who got introduced to a facility, an uh, institution that they had no idea existed and what it could give them. So I'm thrilled that I've had the chance to do that and to build a tremendous partnership with uh, Parkland. Wonderful, so tell us about Cobra Venture. What is it? Wow, uh, Cobra Venture is really, it's, it's almost two things. One, it is, uh, its, its goal is to develop a resource center on this campus where students who say, I think I want to do something on my own. I want to start my own business. Uh, but I really don't know how to get started. If we can offer our students a resource center to go to, not the library is wonderful, it's got tremendous resources here, but to have a source where you can go and begin your process mm -hmm. and to understand what the process is and the steps involved. And then through me, I hope, to introduce them to all of the opportunities that they have in this community to seek out uh, guidance on how to put together a business plan, mm -hmm. uh, guidance on where to find finances. But the other part of the Cobra Venture is to actually start a cohort of students uh, who will spend time in the spring semester going through workshops, 
to learn about what it takes to put a business plan together and and in doing so understand the amount of effort the amount of time the amount of dedication and commitment they have to have if they want to make this work because very few entrepreneurs actually succeed after the third year so tell me a little bit about the workshops. so what type of speakers or what is the content of those workshops that the students are, are going through well we, we took building a business plan and this when we say business plan this is a plan that a student or myself would have to go if I needed funding uh, for my business I have to walk into a bank a financial institution a uh, capital wherever and I have to have a plan I can't just walk in and say hey I've got a great idea I'd like you to loan me a hundred thousand dollars I'll bring it back to you later they don't do that okay they want to know exactly have you thought this through how much you're gonna charge for your product what are you selling what are you doing is it a service is it a product uh, is it marketed per gonna be marketed well so the business plan is broken down into seven different segments so for each segment we have a speaker or speakers who come in to the workshops and we offer this on Thursday evenings about every other week and it's at the uh, community education uh, office building Parkland's community education over on Mattis Avenue and we go from 6 to 7 30 and our students get to do this they're not paying for this but at the same time it's not a class it's something they were doing extra they want to they want to do this they're committed to it because they had to apply in the fall through an application process we then reviewed I think for the first year out we reviewed 21 or 22 applications and this is a committee of maybe 20 in the community of Parkland faculty and community members and we selected 10 students of those 10 one has since decided not to do it so we have nine students this semester who are dedicating themselves to coming to seven workshops there's an entry uh, introductory prod and at the end they'll do a pitch contest so tell me a little bit about the pitch contest. So what does that entail for students and what's in it for them for participating? Well, uh, because of the uh, Parkland College Foundation was uh, given some gifts from some folks in town mm -hmm. who wanted to promote entrepreneurship at Parkland College. And I know that this is gonna be discussed later so I won't go into detail. But from those financial gifts, one of the donors said, I would like to honor an outstanding entrepreneurial student at Parkland College with a $3,000 gift, no strings attached, but I want you to show me, Parkland, how you're gonna select that person. So the students have to go through the workshops, they have to attend all the workshops. At the end, they're gonna give a five, up to five minute pitch of their business in the student union, on stage, in front of everybody here. It sounds a little bit nerve wracking. Uh, yeah, that is. But the one that wins, the one that's chosen with the best idea, best delivery, best product, uh, will be awarded $3,000 uh, at the Entrepreneur of the Year Gala in June. That's pretty tremendous. $3,000 can go uh, a long way in starting your you business. You better believe it. You better believe it. So, well, How are we going to prepare the students? So what are they... Uh, what are they going to be doing to get ready to go on stage in addition to building the business plan? That's kind of a well, whole we, other element. Uh, there's a uh, staff member here, Jody Littleton, who's offered to be um, a coach, mm -hmm. a speech coach, uh, and help our students go through that process. So our students are getting a, a lot of, I would call it a, a, a advice, a lot of help, uh, and they're going to do a lot of prep to prepare for their pitch. Then we're going to have a dress rehearsal May 9th, where they're actually going to get up and give their pitches in front of uh, a smaller group, but to see what it feels like to do that. And then they have from May 9th until May 20th to then prepare for their final pitch, and this is it. On Monday night, May 20th, they'll be in the union to give their pitch, con uh, pitch and see if they can win. That's really exciting. So we'll definitely uh, be there, perhaps with PCTV, to cover I, the pitch competition and share out the I results so. of that. I hope so, because to me, this is the start of something really great at Parkland College and to, to be honored with that opportunity to help start something like this is, is really exciting. And, and we're going through the process right now of developing what their criteria will be to judge the students, mm -hmm. what we'll be looking at. Um, and, and you know, we have students, of our nine students, we have students that are in their 50s. We have students who just graduated from high school last year. Uh, very diverse group men women different ethnicities this is an amazing group of young people I call them young because everybody's younger than me but but I mean they're they're great they're great folks and I, they're so excited about their idea mm -hmm. whether it be a service or a product that they think they'll, they'll sell 
So what are some of the ideas? Just give us a flavor of some of the business ideas that oh the my students goodness. have. Uh, one of our students uh, is uh, from the Congo. Uh, he graduated from Centennial just last year and he's a brand new student at Parkland. But he came from an agricultural background in the Congo and he understands that the folks there don't <coughs> have as much technology as they should have to properly put together a, a good ag program or farm their land. So he wants to put together a an idea where he can bring back that technology to the people of the Congo in his area and then hope it spreads. Uh, another young lady, uh, she said, Mark, I, I have people who need us to go to their doctor appointments, elderly people who can't really do it themselves. Mm -hmm. And a, a prime example would be that she said, I had an individual who lives in San Francisco. His mother lives here. He can't take care of her that long distance. So he's asked me to then take her to the doctor, has given me permission, through written permission, to listen to what the doctor says, to take notes because the mother can't remember, and to then filter those notes back to him. She says, I want to build a business around this and offer this as a service to the Champaign-Urbana area. Um, we, it, it's great. We have a number of different ideas and they're all, that are all just all across the board. And that's the nice thing about entrepreneurship. If you're in the health professions and you have an idea, come on in. If you're out in automotive and you have an idea, come on in. If you're in computer science and you have an idea, come on in. We do, I really don't think it matters where you're coming from at Parkland College, whatever nook and cranny you're in. If you have an idea mm -hmm. and you, you think it'll fly, let's start talking about it. Now you may find out, well, this is not gonna work. Okay, but I'd rather you try it instead of saying, I wish I woulda. Mm -hmm. Let's just go ahead and try it and see what happens. What I love about that is that it's sort of this experimental time that while you're at Parkland, you have support, but then also it's this exploration that you can do right. before you go out into the community and really take big, big, big risks on your yes. own, that there's, there's a community here uh, that, of individuals that have that same entrepreneurial mindset. Right. And that same um, that same drive that you might um, to try some things out. So I think that's really that's really critical is the ability to maybe make some mistakes and have it be a positive in the end. Well, I think the greatest thing, one of the greatest things I think Parkland allows, and just like we are here in the studio right now today, and we have students in this studio getting a chance to put hands on something mm -hmm. that they have an interest in. If I'm in a classroom and all I'm hearing is a, a talk and somebody's giving me a speech about this or take notes on this, oh, okay, that's fine. But when I get to do it, really do it, that's then I know right. this is for me or it's really not for me. Mm -hmm. So I want this entrepreneurial experience for these students to be real. Mm -hmm. I want them to meet people who have, who have won and meet people who have lost. I want to meet bankers who say, if you're going to come see me, this is exactly what I need. And if you don't bring it in, leave and come back later. I want it to be real, not, oh, aren't we wonderful and we'll do everything for you. No, they need to learn from the get-go that this is a tough, tough thing to do. And those who succeed bust their tail to get it done. Yeah, that's really important. And we know so many students have already been coming to Parkland with the intention to start their own business, but this is a way to formalize that right. um, it within Parkland rather than having students come and, come and go from our programs. Yes. without that level of support. I, ironically, I was at a, a, a community uh, fair last night uh, at the Champaign Public Library, and I had a number of Parkland students, graduates, who came up and said, what's this? What are you, what are you marketing? I said, oh, we're doing this now at Parkland. We, when did this start? I said, just this year. I wish they would have had that when I was there. So yeah. I know there's going to be a lot of folks who, when they find out about it, and understanding that it's it's here, it's a place that they can get help. They can they can talk about their idea. They can brainstorm their idea. Uh, I think it's going to be unbelievably popular. Well, Mark, thank you very much for taking the time to come to the Parkland Report. And with that, we'll go to our first break. I've always found it interesting, and I didn't. I went to Parkland last year and didn't have a major, and I just decided that this is what I wanted to do. Uh, this is actually my second degree. I, I wanted to transfer to the U of I and then decided that I actually didn't know that this major existed. Um, and so I, once I found that out, I kind of stuck here, stuck around here to do this because they don't have this at the U of I. Firefighter, it kind of runs in my family. Um, I wanted to become a full-time firefighter. I do want to become a full-time firefighter, and I really didn't, uh, I didn't know how to go about that. Well, I talked to my guidance counselor at school, and we, uh, we found Parkland. Um, I'm on the volunteer fire department back in my hometown of Atwood. Kind of wanted to 
broaden my knowledge in the fire service so I started taking classes and I'm starting to enjoy it and I'm considering uh, trying to get my associates in fire science. All of it's interesting. It doesn't really seem like work to read the textbook as much as other classes and it directly applies to what we do. I'm on Sodom's fire department so it's a direct uh, application of what we do there. I came in with uh, less experience than anybody else. I've never been on a department at all. Um, I'm not affiliated in any way, so this is kind of my introduction to the fire service. The stuff we learn here is up to date, recent, new. And I'm able to take that back there and apply it, and it's it's really nice. It works out for everyone. We've had a couple opportunities to go um, tour other like tour departments or stations. We went to the IFSI training grounds and got to tour that, and then watch them do a, a night burn. I like what we're doing now, which is just hands-on, putting on gear, taking it off. Um, I really like the hands-on stuff. Basically for me, everything I learn is something new, so I do enjoy that, is I didn't have any experience prior to these classes. It, to me, getting to learn about the fire service is just really intriguing in itself. Uh, the class is three hours long, but really it, it doesn't seem that long. It goes by really quick. Everything we learn is very intriguing, uh, keeps me um, focused in the class and then we get to do hands-on stuff uh, like we've been doing in this class and that's uh, a really good refresher for the training I've had back at home. All the instructors uh, were firefighters or are firefighters. Um, it's kind of a small program so you get a lot of one-on-one -on -one and the instructors really care. I mean they they really care about you and, and where you're going and what, what you want to do for your career. They're, they're all very helpful, very patient. I'm, like I said, I'm a pretty new guy. I don't. There's a whole lot I don't know and they're all very um, accommodating and, and work hard. And they're full of knowledge. Yes, we are in class for three hours, but like I said, it's, it's good stuff. It's very intriguing, easy to learn. Um, they'll talk with you um, and about anything and explain it to make sure you understand it. I, mean, I know that this is the arena I want to be in, but there's a, a bunch of different places you can go. I think fire investigation is, is one area that seems really interesting to me. So after I finish this degree, um, I'll start, you know, testing to, for career departments. I'm going to definitely do the two years and start applying for jobs, but I think I'm going to, uh, I'm going to go pursue a bachelor's degree, but I'll apply as I do that. So if I were to get a job uh, in the middle of my bachelor's degree, that'd be fantastic. Uh, going through this fire program, it's, uh, I'm really enjoying it. You know, and they say do what you love, and this is something I really love to do. So whether it be champagne, Pontiac. I want to become a full-time firefighter somewhere. Parkland's a great program if you're serious about joining the fire service. This is definitely the place to come. Welcome back to the Parkland Report. I'm your host Stephanie Stewart and I am joined now by Tracy Walfelt, who's the Executive Director of the Parkland Foundation. Welcome Tracy. Thanks Stephanie. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. We're glad to have you on the show and it's always good to talk about the money which is uh, kind of your neck of the woods. It so is. That's it exciting. is. It is exciting. So tell us a little bit about the mission of the Parkland Foundation. What do you guys do and why is it important to the college? So really, we're the fundraising arm of the college. So our mission is to really support the mission of the college with financial support. So um, it might be in terms of scholarships to support students achieve their goals. It may be um, program enhancements, um, new equipment, or even um, could be remodeling a building or it could be even extensively uh, and a big capital campaign would be mm -hmm. to build something. So. Um, you know, it's a wide variety of things, but we could not do it without the generosity of our donors. That's wonderful. We just had Mark Shagnon on the show mm -hmm. in the previous segment. He was talking about Cobra Venture, and that program is actually entirely paid for through foundation dollars. So tell us a little bit about that donor impact through Cobra Venture. Exactly. If we did not have those dollars, Cobra Venture wouldn't be off the ground. And we have some really generous donors through the years who have seen a need and a value for developing entrepreneurs here at Parkland College and providing that support for students that are looking at that opportunity. And so money has been set aside to help develop the program, to support um, Mark's position and provide scholarship dollars to our participants so we can offset the cost of the actual program itself. And then um, we also have funding to develop the pitch competition and then funding for the winners of the pitch competition. So as you can see, um, a lot of community support for this program. 
And a lot of that support is coming through the established uh, Entrepreneur of the Year banquet and the program that sort of wraps around that. Tell us about Entrepreneur of the Year. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think that we have the name of our latest Entrepreneur of the Year. We do. Okay. Our, um, this year's Entrepreneur of the Year is Dave Downey. Um, you know, he's been around the community for many years, was a superstar basketball player for the University of Illinois, and we're thrilled to be able to recognize his spirit and vision within this community. So the banquet is, the date has not been set yet, it will be in June, and so we recognize um, Dave's, you know, entrepreneurial spirit, but we will also recognize the winner of the pitch competition. So, so exciting. So, I know. Um, such a great opportunity for us to showcase this program and hopefully get more support for mm -hmm. so that we can continue it, but also to allow students to see what others in our community have done. Um, there are so many um, entrepreneurs in this community that have been successful and have gone on to do great things. Absolutely, that'll be a really exciting banquet after the pitch competition where we can really showcase not only the winner but really all of the participants and mm -hmm. what they're setting out to do in the community so yeah. all of it's very exciting it is very exciting and you know the thing I don't know that people realize is this isn't a normal type program that you would find at every community college um, I think we're probably the only one maybe in the state of Illinois that offers a program like this and has this network because um, Cobra Venture isn't the only one that's supported um, we have AMP Applied Media Promotions and we have Perimeter Road so you know we have three prongs under the pin umbrella as we call it here at Parkland. Mm -hmm. And all of those are supported through donors and, mm -hmm. and are ways that you can plug in um, if, you, if you really are wanting to give toward a particular mission. Yes. So tell us a little bit about, you've got a card, and so mm -hmm. I want you to talk a little bit about Day of Giving because that's coming up really soon. So what is the Day of Giving and how, do you, how does someone participate in that? So Day of Giving is March 6th and it is the anniversary of the Parkland College Foundation. We have been in existence for 50 years um, and so it's being touted as 24 hours with one purpose. And the whole purpose is to raise money to support students and programs here at Parkland College. Um, lots of ways to do that. Um, there's always needs here on the campus. And so our goal is to raise $50,000 in one day. Oh my gosh. That sounds like a big feat. How is that, how is that gonna happen? How can people give? So um, you can go online, um, parkland.edu um, backslash giving day. And you can go online, you can do it through credit cards. We're establishing a text to give, so watch social media. There'll be a lot more promotions about how to do that. Um, we've already received three checks for Day of Giving. It's not Just, even the Day of Giving yet. It's not even the Day of Giving yet, um, based on postcards that were mailed to all the households in our district. Um, you can designate how, where you want that gift to go. So wow. if you want to start a scholarship or contribute to an existing scholarship, you can do that. Um, if you want to contribute to a particular program, so if nursing holds a special place in your heart, you can contribute to a nursing program. If athletics, you want to support the Cobras, you can support athletics. So lots of ways to support students, but every dollar counts and every dollar will help a student achieve their mission of gaining higher education. That's really exciting. We'll have yeah. to uh, watch for all of that on social media and elsewhere, um, and also look in your mailbox for, for the postcard. Yes. Um, what if I miss the day of giving? What if I'm watching this on YouTube in six months and you're like, I miss the day of giving, but how do I reach out to the Parkland Foundation? How do people do that? So there's lots of ways. You can email us at foundation um, at parkland.edu. Um, that's our general email account. You can go always go on to parkland.edu, um, look for the foundation button, click on that. You can get to a giving page there as well. Um, so there's lots of opportunities. You can always mail in a check and just designate how you want to give that. Um, also, planned giving is another great way for people to give. Um, it's not a current gift, but it's a gift in the future that creates those legacies of giving. Mm -hmm. And we can help you establish that. Um, really, it's a pretty simple process. You don't have to give a lot of money to make a big difference. I really like that concept of the legacy giving and leaving something behind. So if you have, you were a Parkland student in the past, for example, my dad was a Parkland student mm -hmm. back when Parkland was first created. Um, and so leaving that legacy for the next generations to keep coming back and keep coming back, that's just a really fulfilling um, aspect of, of giving to the Parkland Foundation. It is, it is a great way to do that. Um, it's a lasting tribute. 
Um, it creates opportunities for generations to come. And a lot of times people then will also give in memory or in tribute to somebody. So I, I can't help but think what a great way to honor somebody's life and legacy than giving a gift that continues to give over and over and over as those students um, achieve their dreams. That's wonderful. I think one of the things I wanted to ask you about while we were here too were scholarships, just the impact of scholarships that are coming through the foundation for particular programs or types of mm -hmm. students. So tell me a little bit about how many scholarships do we award and tell me all about scholarships because I know students are interested in doing that because it helps pay the bills, it, helps pay for school. <laughs> it does. So um, over 400 scholarships were awarded last year, about $500,000. So there's lots of money out there. Um, the key is to apply, so I tell students apply for anything and everything that you might possibly be eligible for. And scholarships may mean the difference sometimes between attending or not attending. So it's sometimes that filler that, you know, you just don't have quite enough money to do that. Um, and some of the stories that we hear from students, um, their backgrounds, mm -hmm. you know, maybe they're the first person in their family to ever attend college. Maybe they um, came from a situation that was um, a little bit dangerous or scary for them, but this is a way out of that and they're still um, trying to do that. Maybe it's a lifelong dream. Um, you know, they wanted to be a nurse or um, they want to work in the ag industry. They were a fam came from a family farm, but it's not maybe large enough to support two family farmers, but there's a way to still work in the industry and still be connected to farming. So all of those opportunities are here and those scholarships make those possible. Again, it's an easy process. Um, it's a donor scholarship fund. So if you're a donor and you're like, gosh, I'd like to start a scholarship, but I really don't know how, give me a call. It's a really simple process. You tell us, this is the kind of student I'd like to receive my scholarship and we put the paperwork into place. You make your contribution and then we can take over the awarding process. Wonderful. So Tracy, what else does the foundation have on the horizon? Anything else that you'd like to share with our viewers? Oh gosh, there's always lots of fun things going on, um, but we're always looking for new and great ways. The scholarship reception is April 17th. I'm really excited to be part of that. It is a chance for us to recognize students who are the recipients of scholarships and celebrate their achievements, but it's also a way to celebrate the donor's gift. Mm -hmm. And the donors and the students get to meet each other. How powerful is oh, that? Oh my gosh. I've had a scholarship for many years and there is nothing greater, uh, no better feeling than the student to say thank you for helping me get my education. And then, you know, we get to watch them walk across the stage yeah. at graduation and you feel like, gosh, I've played a small part in their role of getting to that goal. And so it's a great opportunity. Donors love it. Um, you know, people think, oh, they just give money. No, they really feel the impact and, you know, they're giving from their heart and it really does make your heart feel good. Yeah. Man, your work is really rewarding. So thank you very much yes. for taking the time to share with me today. Well, thank you for having me. And um, if you, anybody's interested, um, contact us at Parkland College Foundation. Um, we love to talk about the opportunity. If you haven't been on our beautiful campus for a while, please come out and we'll give you a tour. And we appreciate everything you're doing. Wonderful, thanks Tracy. That's it for this edition of the Parkland Report. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.